because open source is not trapped inside a single organization. The rules of participation are cultural, not contractual, and broad community participation is the whole point. Take the most successful open source example, Linux. Linux software has gone from de drawing development effort exclusively from a single Finnish graduate student to receiving the attentions of hundreds of fully funded developers in multiple Fortune 500 corporations, government agencies, and academic institutions. Even organizations that are in direct market competition, IBM and Oracle, or Red Hat and Novell, provide code for Linux. And so do thousands of other developers in, with institutional affiliations, ranging from top few government agencies, to academia, to individual developers whose only real affiliation is to their task and their copy vendor. In fact, this is interesting, uh, kernel developer Greg uh, Krolich Hartman did a study last year of the kernels, Linux kernel source code. And he found that the number one affiliation of kernel developers was unaffiliated. 70% of the Linux kernel was provided by people who have no formal affiliation. Red Hat was number two at 11%. The example of Linux shows that open source programs are not limited to feeding off of purely open source companies. They can feed off of any company, organization, or individual that derives competitive advantage from using open source. One of the most perceptive observers and commentators on the entrance of open source ideas into the marketplace is Matt Assay. And I highly, highly recommend his writing. Um, he has a blog he posts basically daily. He says something interesting, it's amazing. He recently wrote, we are all open source companies now, which means that none of us are. And what he means is that every company in the marketplace is now deriving competitive advantage from open source in one way or another. Even deeply, deeply proprietary companies. IBM was once so proprietary that Microsoft looked open by comparison. But in 2000, IBM was the first company to adopt a Linux strategy. They invest directly in Linux kernel development to ensure it runs on their CPUs and systems. They're a founder of the Eclipse Java pro framework project, and they build a number of their proprietary products like Rational on top of those Eclipse libraries. Oracle has purchased several open source companies in the last few years, database companies like Innovation Sleepy Cat, and this year they purchased Sun, which netted them some very well-known open source names. And they aren't just sitting on them. At Oracle Open World last week, Oracle's evil genius promised to invest more money in MySQL R&D than Sun is currently spending. Even Microsoft, who practically invented the idea of proprietary shrink wrap software back in the 70s, now has an active open source strategy. They have an open source code hosting repository, Poplex, they're a sponsor of the Apache Foundation, they invest in the development of Windows compatible open source, like Iron Python and now PHP. They have even contributed patches to the Linux kernel under the GNU GPL. <laughs> <laughs> and in our industry too, we have momentum towards more and more open source software. ESRI uses the Google Raster library in our explorer, and so does Google Earth. Uh, Postis is becoming an industry standard spatial database supported even by the old guard companies like ESRI and MapInfo. <laughs> when even the proprietary companies are investing in open source, what does it mean to be an open source company? Everybody's doing it. People like to talk about the change from proprietary to open source as an open source revolution. But revolutions are quick, turbulent affairs. Is it a revolution if it takes 25 years? I think what we're experiencing is not an open source revolution, it's an open source evolution. The progress is slow and incremental, but the movement is always in the same direction, month by month and year by year. We're at the start of a transformation in the software market, where purchasers recognize that they have the option to buy the whole product and get the software for free. And we're in the middle of a transformation of how we build software, we're moving very quickly from closed corporate model where the source code is private to an open collaborative model where the, open, where the source code is a commons. And it's the combination of these two trends that fills me with confidence because the two trends are reinforcing each other. And that, that is why I can, over Christmas dinner, look my mother-in-law in the eye and say, don't worry, it'll all work out. I'm on the side of history, on the ground floor of a growing market, riding a wave that is just picking up and so are all of you. Let's make the most of it. Thanks very much.
Thank you, Paul, and give me the support. Okay, that's it for now.